What are stablecoins? How do they work? Are stablecoins a good form of investment? Let's dive into all of these and more in this video. If you would like to stay updated on all things crypto, make sure you click on that subscribe button, turn on the notification, and follow us on all our social media platforms linked below. Let's begin. When compared to traditional financial securities like equities and bonds, Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies are very volatile. Price swings of over 20% or even 100% within an hour are common sights in the world of crypto. This is where a subgroup of cryptocurrencies that are meant to be stable with a constant value comes in. Stable coins. Stable coins are digital currencies that are pegged to a stable reserve asset. The fiat currency, such as the US dollar or gold. In comparison to unpegged cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, the values of these coins remain consistent due to their stable assets, which makes them less sensitive to price changes. The volatility of cryptocurrency contrasts with the relatively constant pricing of conventional money, like US dollars or other assets like gold. Currency values, such as the dollar, fluctuate over time, but cryptocurrencies which increase and decrease in value on a daily basis have more dramatic fluctuations. Stablecoins combine the anonymity, security, and convenience of cryptocurrencies with the stability and confidence of traditional fiat currency. Stablecoins are divided into four groups based on the operating mechanics. The first is fiat collateralized stablecoins. The group of stablecoins uses a fiat currency reserve, such as the US dollar, to issue a sufficient amount of crypto coins. Fiat collateral is held in reserve by a central issuer or financial institution, and it must be proportional to the quantity of stablecoin tokens in circulation. Independent trustees manage such reserves, which are audited on a regular basis to ensure that the essential compliance is met. The second type is the crypto collateralized stablecoins. This group of stablecoins is pretty given with the name. They are backed by other cryptocurrencies. When you buy a stablecoin like this, you lock your cryptocurrency into a smart contract in exchange for tokens of equivalent worth. Rather than depending on a central issuer, this procedure uses smart contracts. Stablecoins that are crypto collateralized are also over collateralized to protect against price swings and the relevant cryptocurrency collateral asset. Due to the volatility of the reserve cryptocurrencies, a higher number of cryptocurrency tokens are kept as a reserve for releasing a smaller number of stablecoins. The third group is the non-collateralized stablecoins or algorithmic stablecoins. This group of stablecoins does not have any reserves, but they do have a functional mechanism to keep the price stable. Similar to that of a central bank, the dollar-pegged base coin, for example, employs a decision-making method to raise or reduce token production based on demand. Such operations are comparable to a central bank, producing banknotes to sustain fiat currency values. It is possible to do this by developing a smart contract on a decentralized platform that can execute independently. The last one is the commodity-backed stablecoins. Physical assets such as precious metals, oil, and real estate are used to underpin this group of stablecoins. It's vital to note that the prices of these commodities may and will vary, and so there's a risk of losing the value. Stablecoins backed by commodities make it easier to invest in assets that might otherwise be complex and tedious. Obtaining a real estate property and handling the fee associated with it, for example, is difficult and expensive in many areas. Similar to gold, owning tangible assets such as gold and silver isn't always a viable option. Those who want to exchange tokens for cash or take possession of the underlying tokenized asset will find commodity-backed stablecoins coins useful. Stablecoins are primarily used to facilitate trading on cryptocurrency exchanges. Rather than purchasing Bitcoin using fiat currency such as the US dollar, traders frequently exchange fiat for a stablecoin and then trade the stablecoin for another cryptocurrency such as Bitcoin or Ether. For example, say Alice purchased 50 Bitcoin for $200 three years ago and the cost of Bitcoin now has increased to $15,000 per coin. Alice then sells 25 bitcoins for 375,000 and trades the amount to a stablecoin such as DAI. Alice can now hold on to the stablecoin to then purchase other cryptocurrencies of her choice in the future at a lower price. Assuming the peg remains, holding on to stablecoin also shields Alice from any downside risks. For crypto exchanges, stablecoins are similar to poker chips. For the skilled and experienced crypto trader, stablecoins are used for a number of purposes, including staking and lending although most novices utilize them to save trading costs. This is due to the fact that many exchanges do not charge fees when converting US dollars for stablecoins. Stablecoins are also used in the form of remittances, where you can transfer funds across different countries. For example, in September, the Stellar blockchain introduced Digital Soul, a stablecoin tied to Soul. 
Peru's national currency and may be sent between people in different nations without the high cost charged by third companies. With so many new stablecoins being released, it is good to keep in mind that not all stablecoins are created equally and it's critical to have a thorough grasp of which ones are the best and top stablecoins by market capitalization. These are the top few stablecoins right now. Tether. With a market cap at $78 billion, it is the most common sort of stablecoin and it has recently piqued the interest of many investors. Bitfinex has released Tether and is backed by US dollars. Tether is the most widely available stablecoin for investors, with 428 exchanges supporting it. Tether is a fiat collateralized stablecoin, which means it is backed by fiat currencies such as the US dollar. Despite its popularity, Tether was scrutinized for controversial claims of resisting audits and being found guilty of criminal behavior. Over the years, Tether has caught itself quite a number of controversies, followed by pop-ups of news headlines. While these findings had no effect on Tether's everyday operations in the crypto market, investors should proceed with care when dealing with Tether, especially if they possess substantial quantities of USDT. USDC With a market cap of $45 billion, USDC was introduced back in 2018 by Coinbase and is a fiat collateralized stablecoin. USDC is based on Ethereum, a decentralized programmable blockchain that enables the creation of a wide range of apps and tokens. Binance USD with a market cap of $14 billion, BUSD is another fiat collateralized stablecoin. The Binance coin was introduced in 2017 as an ERC-20 token on the Ethereum network by the Binance Exchange. DAI With a market cap of $9 billion, DAI is the result of the Maker Protocol, a decentralized Ethereum blockchain-based application and is a crypto collateralized stablecoin. Is stablecoin a good investment, store of value? Stablecoins may be a fantastic alternative if you want to become involved with cryptocurrencies, but can't stand the waves of volatility. Before diving headfirst into stablecoin investment, let's take a look at the pros and cons of this digital currency. Pros. Stability. Helps investors mitigate losses in the event of a big market downturn. Convenience and transparency, thanks to the regular audits to keep them in check. Cons. Returns are not high. Stablecoins are made to be steady and their prices do not move all that much. Decentralized collateral system. The owners remain anonymous, and as a result, stablecoins raise trust difficulties. Accounts can be hacked, and the funds can be embezzled by third parties. Not risk-free. In general, the crypto business is unregulated, and stablecoins have had their slice of controversy. Those that use stablecoins should be aware of the risks they are tolerating and manage the expectations of investing in them. The most obvious benefit of stablecoin technology is that it can be used as a means of exchange, thereby mending the division of fiat to cryptocurrency. Stablecoins are naturally stable assets, making them a good store of value and encouraging their adoption in regular transactions. Stablecoins also increase the mobility of crypto assets around the ecosystem. How can we buy them? The majority of stablecoins are bought on cryptocurrency exchanges and may be purchased in the same way as any other cryptocurrency. Just make sure the exchange you're using supports the stablecoin you want to buy. Stablecoin is a cryptocurrency that aims to regulate certain principles that other cryptocurrencies lack, posing a severe threat to the financial industry. On the other hand, central bank digital currency, CBDC, is a new type of cryptocurrency that is controlled by governments that are becoming more powerful. What differentiates stablecoins and CBDC is the way in which the monetary system operates. Stablecoin is an unregulated cryptocurrency, whereas CBDC is fully regulated and is overseen by a country's monetary authority, which simply means that stablecoin is decentralized, but CBDC aspires to be centralized. With the increasing growth of stablecoin in recent years, central banks have increased their attempts to develop their own stable digital currencies. Given the numerous unresolved design elements currently in play, it is too early to accurately estimate the storyline for CBDCs and stablecoins. Several questions in play are with central banks. For example, prioritize retail over wholesale use cases over domestic or cross-border applications. How quickly will national authorities pursue stablecoin regulation before releasing their own CBDCs? As both stablecoins and CBDCs become more generally available in the coming years, the answers to these questions may become apparent. Besides CBDC, there are also several companies including PayPal, JP Morgan, and IBM that are launching their own stablecoin to simplify any payment processes. Stablecoins may be purchased without the use of a particular bank account, which could make them more appealing to the public. There are some controversies around stablecoins. Perhaps meddle in some coins to check it out for yourself. Make sure to subscribe, turn on the notification, and follow us on all our social media platforms. Are you holding on to any stablecoins? Leave them down in the comments below.
But that's all from us this time. We'll see you real soon.